give you greetings from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is ahead of all our lives. Let's show some praise this morning. Again, give it up, give it up. God is so good. It's October the 4th, and the three quarters, 2020. He's shown up, been so good to us. He woke us up this morning and started us on our way. He gave us a brand new day. For well, yesterday has gone and today is before us. So let's lift up his name and praise this morning. Come on, come on, y'all can do better than that. I don't know about you, but you woke up, you didn't have COVID this morning. For somebody who had COVID, the Lord has lifted him up. There may be somebody in the hospital, but we're going to lift him up and, and praise this morning. We're going to pray for him. We're going to pray for our enemy. Oh, God. 
church say amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Let the church say amen again. He's worthy to be praised. Glory, hallelujah. How many of you know he brought us from a mighty long way? He's been keeping us all again today to give God praise and glory. Amen. We just know that God has been good to you by the way we see your smiling faces behind your back. Amen. I see some faces I haven't seen in a while and I'm so glad to see you. Amen. Let me know God is still on the throne. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me make this quick announcement. Um, those who may be watching us live on YouTube and Facebook, uh, today is Communion Sunday. Uh, and if you're not able to come in because of whatever, the, the underlying health issues, we will be having drive-by communion. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we'll be here doing that up until about 12 o'clock. Uh, so uh, if you want to drive by and get your communion, uh, feel free to do so. Amen. Yeah. I want to get that out early enough. So in case they want to prepare themselves to come, uh, maybe they in their house pajamas. I don't know. <laughs> that folks to loosen y'all up a little. <laughs> but come on. <laughs> because you'll be able to stay in the car. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. This is a wonderful day. The sun is shining. <laughs> Amen. 
and, and, and we'll get back on the schedule. All right? All right. Good morning. Good morning. Give an honor to God. These are your weekly announcements. So we know that this month is very special. We are recognizing two important events. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, right? Along with our Clergy Appreciation Month. So because we have service live on the first and third Sundays now, we will celebrate both of these events on the third Sunday of this month, which is October 18th. So just like we do every year, it is Pink Sunday on the third Sunday of this month. So please, ma'am and sir, on October 18th, please wear your pink attire. Not only that, on that Sunday, like I said, we will celebrate our clergy. As you have seen, there are roughly six of them that have been here on the front lines from March until now, every Sunday, in and out. Amen. While we have been at the comfort of our homes, they have been here physically, and so we want to definitely appreciate them and show our love on the third Sunday. Also, please mark your calendars coming forward in November. We know that we celebrate each year our church anniversary. And so because we have service live on the first and third Sunday of each month, this year our church anniversary will be on the first Sunday in November, which is November 1st. Amen? So start planning accordingly. We, um, we are uh, um, allowing you, if you will, to uh, request our church members, your friends and families, to come on back home on that Sunday. We will not serve dinner as we usually will and practice on each other. So, you just need to come on out that day. We will have a guest speaker for our church anniversary and praise the Lord in our usual fashion. And with that, the last thing for today, it is the first Sunday as we know. Nothing has changed. We still appreciate our pastor on the first Sunday of each month. So, we know that money is dirty and so we're not passing those in the basket. But if you will, all of you who are technology savvy, you can cash app our pastor. His cash app is Pastor Cheryl Sr. Pastor Cheryl SR. Now make sure that you put the SR on there because if you put just Pastor Cheryl, a woman will pop up. And that's not who we want to send his money to. Pastor Cheryl Sr. SR and you will see his face there. Or you can go to Give Him Five like you do each week and there is an option there for Pastor's aid. All right, ma'am and sir, please um, be obedient to what you have heard. And we have one thank you card, and it reads a great big thanks to all of you, Reverend Kenneth and Sister Dolly Sherrill, Greater New Zion Baptist Youth, Christian Education, and Staff Department, to the primaries, the beginners, the intermediates, the juniors, and the seniors, the adult women's class number one Sunday school. You are very, very nice to me. May God bless all of you in such a special way. And this special thanks comes from none other than Sister Janabal in Houston. Amen. Amen. Second news, your Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, on uh, this past week, uh, Sister Cheryl was a speaker at a Women's Day service over at the Fairview Baptist Church and uh, they had a recording. Um, uh, she was over there on Thursday and they showed it on Saturday. Uh, Y'all might want to check that out and see Sister Cheryl because, you know, she did a wonderful job. Let's give us some love. Amen. 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 They, did a, they did a drive by on yesterday and I drove by and gave my wife a little wave, you know. Amen. Praise God. All right. Uh, let us prepare ourselves to go vote. Amen again. There are some, there are some, uh, some forms on the table out in the hallway. Uh, one is a voter's uh, ballot that you will see. And on the back side of that, there's some, we, we, we gave you some tips 
on how to make your selection. Amen. And then the other one is showing you some information on the questions uh, that, may, that we may not know anything about. Amen. So uh, if you feel free to get those so you can be kind of ready when you get to the booth, you'll kind of have a, a better, fresher idea as to what you might want to do. Amen. All right. Uh, and, I, and of course, you already know if you get the carol, um, and maybe you've seen it on TV, and maybe you've even driven by it. Amen. We're getting ready to receive a, a, a grocery store on 36th and Lincoln. grocery market of some sort over here on 23rd Street, somewhere off the of hood and prospect in between there uh, next to the, uh, the health uh, clinic that's right there on 23rd. Amen. Uh, they've had ribbon cuttings in both locations, so it's fixing to happen. Amen. Somebody know that God will answer the prayer. Hey. The prayer hearing and the prayer answer from God. And and, 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 and y'all know we need that over here. Yeah. Amen. And, and they're going to have stuff that we like in those stores. Amen. Like so let us continue to pray that this thing goes through uh, smoothly. All right? Yeah. All right, y'all. I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, but I'm, so I'm going to get on out the way. Now, wait a minute. Hold up. All the birthdays in October. Stand on up in the house. Yeah. Let me see you. internally going on, Lord, we just turn it over to you right now in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, we thank you, Father, for being so good, Father. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for keeping and watching over us, Lord, even when things are out of our control, Lord, but we know that all things work together for the good of those that love you, Father. So, Lord, we just say thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the victory. Thank you, Lord. Even when we can't see it, Lord, we just say thank you anyhow, Father, because, Lord, we know that all things are possible for you. So, Lord, we just say thank you. We just lift up and magnify your holy name right now, Father. We love you. We thank you. We had 10,000 tongues, Father. We just could not thank you enough for what you have done and what you are doing and what you are preparing the way for us even right now. So, Lord, we just say thank you. So we ask, Lord, that the pastor will come and bring a word for us, Father, that we can take and use with us in our minds and in our hearts, Father, so that we can continue to join us through this journey that we call life, Father. Touch this church family, all the other doors that are open in your name, Father. We just ask, Lord, that you will continue to lead and guide us in the direction that you would have us to go as your children. All these things we ask in the name that is above all names, in the only name that the enemy trembles at the sound of it,
we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you would stand for the reading of the word. We honor to all of these officers and these ministers. To all of you, my brothers and sisters. You turn with me to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27 through verse 31. Coming from the NIV version, this is what it says. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is dis disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. Even you grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like you. They will run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. God bless you. God keep you. Is our prayer. Amen. Can you run that slide? That's good. You can go ahead and turn that off. All right. Uh, I want to talk to you today about this trap that's taking a toll on me. Now, I know y'all know underdog is old school. I don't know what kind of cartoons these kids are watching now. I grew up on underdog. And I must confess, I love me some underdog. And the older I get, the more I get why it is underdog, why he really excites me. Because especially when I was growing up as a young black boy, Amen. Underdog is a reminder of our journey as a people. As we come over a way that with tears are watered, we have been underdogs. When you look up the dictionary definition of underdog, one of those definitions speaks of those who find themselves victimized yeah. by oppression and injustice. Yeah. yeah. And that would make them be considered as underdogs. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I like the concept of underdog. Yeah. An underdog is one who is underestimated yeah. Yeah. and who is overwhelmed. An underdog is one who is 
devalued. And yet, in spite of being devalued, God still receives and gives us an upgrade. And I like that because already I'm in somebody's Kool-Aid. I already know what flavor you like. And if you be honest with yourself, you would have spent months of your life as an underdog. An underdog uh, who others have looked over. And yet, God, here it is, God has blessed you. He's blessed you to overcome. An underdog is one here who is often overwhelmed. And yet underdog is undegraded. Amen. He's undergirded by power that's greater than that which overwhelmed him. Yeah, I like me some underdog. Because underdog, just when you think it's all over, that's when underdog somehow has the strength to come through. I like underdog because underdog uh, is our testimony yeah. as black America. Mm -hmm. We know the strain and the pain. Yeah. We know the struggle of being underdog. Yeah. I mean, after all, we should not have survived the hell and the horror of slavery. Right. Well, here it is, yet we are still here. Yeah. Somehow we survived the legalization of oppression and racism. Right. And yet we are still here. Thank you, Lord. Somebody ought to say something. Thank you, Lord. We are still here in the spite of the trauma and the drama yeah. uh -huh. that we have experienced in the hypocrisy, the, the hypocrisy of American democracy. Come on. We are still here as underdogs. Mm -hmm. Who've been able to overcome yet? Yet, my brothers and sisters, I shared that episode of underdog having to deal with the overcast. Yeah. Amen. The overcast has a whole lot of strength and power. Yeah. And overcast has lured underdog into a trap. Yeah. Put a little Bible. Noonday Bible study students know we've been talking about bait and traps. Right, right. And so he's been lured into a trap. And the bait is under dog love joint. Come on. Sweet Polly Purebred. And I think I, I think you ought to know. I know under dog is old school. Yeah. But under dog was hip hop before hip hop. Yeah. And I believe who fell in love with hip hop yeah. back in the 70s, they must have been watching some underdog in the 60s. Yeah. Because underdog can't even talk without rhyme and rhythm. Yeah. <laughs> underdog, my sisters and brothers said, there's no need to fear. Underdogs. Underdogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're not here for the of the DJ. As underdog get word that Polly is in trouble. And he raps his rescue. When Polly is in trouble, he says, I am not slow. It's hip, hip, hip. In a way, I go. I tell you, I like me some underdog. Because underdog is hip hop before hip hop. He has rhyme and rhythm. Every time he opens up his mouth, you have to step up and step out when others expect you to fall down. Underdog has been caught after he tried to rescue Sweet Polly Purebred. And he's in a bubble contraption. It's a structure, and here it is, underdog and some is inside something, a situation that is unsufferable. That he has never been in before. Uh -huh. He's never been in this situation.
situation, an underdog is now trapped in something that in real sense is frustrating him. Yeah. It's precluding him from doing what it is he intends to do. Y'all 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 see the underdog as, as underdog tries to speak about uh, he's doing what he's going to do. At first, you don't succeed. Uh, Amen. That, that's what he was saying in the video. Yeah. He says, at first, you don't succeed. He says, then you ought to try and try and try yeah. again. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Do y'all hear underdog as he flies up against the wall of the rubber contraption? Yeah. Oh, that you get knocked down again and again. Yeah. Other dogs, my sister brothers, again, he's, he's, he's in something he's never been in before. Right. And I'm going to pause right there because I'm telling you, we're in a situation right now that we've never been in before. Right, right. The coronavirus crisis, COVID-19, has got us stuck just like Chuck right. in an insufferable situation of a mountain death, not to mention the discorporation of black people. Oh. We are tested the least, but we're dying the most. Right. Right. As though there's no concern with only for the wealth of the economy right. than the health of humanity. So here it is. We are in a structure, in a situation we've never been in before. Right. And that's exactly where underdog is. Underdog keeps on trying and trying, but no with me. Every time he tries, he is increasingly frustrated and fatigued until underdog no longer has the strength. He's tired. Yeah. He's weary. He can't do it no more. Right. Why? Because what he is has taken a toll on him. Right. I don't know who it is that I'm talking to, uh -huh. but I'm talking to somebody. Yeah. This thing is taking a toll on you. Yeah. Well, since y'all sitting here all quiet, let me just testify for myself. Right. This shift. Uh -huh. It's taking a toll on me. Yeah. I said this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking a toll on me. Uh -huh. I'm tired. Well. And I'm frustrated and fatigued. Yeah. My body time will be long. Sometimes it feels like my body thinks it's four o'clock in the morning when it's really four o'clock in the afternoon. It's taking a toll on my body. It's taking a toll on my spirit. Because there are times I like to be real. I don't even feel like talking to God. I fall down on my knees to pray. And immediately, I'm distracted by everything going on in the world. Can I get a witness right there? I start thinking thoughts while I'm praying. Yeah. And don't y'all judge me because I know you do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And the thoughts ain't got nothing to do with Jesus, God, the Holy Ghost, or God's Word. Why? Because this thing is taking a toll on me. Y'all get that phrase? 
Amen. It's taking a toll on me. Y'all get that phrase? Yeah. It's really one of those popular phrases that is a metaphor and it speaks, here it is, of what happens whenever you experience damage, when you experience loss, yeah. suffering. Yeah. That's what it means to have something to take a toll on you. Because whenever there is, here it is, an earthquake or a tornado, of course they take a toll of the damage. That is the result of which was destroyed. And will you be honest with me today and say this thing has taken a toll on you? It's taking a toll on me? It's taking a toll on you, and, 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 and since it's taking a toll, the question becomes, is there a word from God? And I know it's a word from the Lord today. So in our text, the book lets us know the people of God are stuck like Chuck in a contraption or a structure called Babylonian oppression. Babylon between 598 and 587 BC. It swoops down into Jerusalem and they, they destroy the city, demolishes the temple. And after destroying the city and demolishing the temple, they then deport to Babylon. As they took, as, as they took captive, they took into captivity some of those inhabitants of Jerusalem. They take them in to Babylon. And now it's taking a toll on them. It's taking such a toll on them that when the Babylonian captors says, why don't y'all praise God when the praise song of Zion like you used to? Why is it we can't give God praise like we used to? Amen, somebody. You know what they said? It's right here. In Psalm 137, he says, How shall we say the Lord's song in a strange land? I must stop right there for a minute because that is sometimes how I feel when this thing starts to take a toll on me and I don't feel like getting up in the morning. I don't feel like uh, even answering the phone in the morning. Don't judge me, y'all. Can I get a witness right there? Yeah, I don't want to get on another Zoom meeting. I don't want to get on another conference call. Because I'm tired. It's taking a toll on me. And so the consequences is I don't just want to not get up. I don't even want to pray. I don't want to give God praise. How are you going to sing the Lord's song? in a strange land when it's taking a toll on me and the text lets us know in the midst of the toy being taken on you he said here comes Isaiah which starts in chapter 40 of Isaiah uh, chapters 1 through chapter 39 addresses another generation. But chapter 40 through 55 addresses this generation that is, that is who is now in captivity. Their lives has been disrupted. They are in there and stuck like in a jacked up situation that they really can't get out of. That they have no control over. They are now considered to be underdogs. But look, but look what happens. Underdogs get the word in the midst of the world, in the midst of a crisis, amen, that has wrecked and wounded the people. Are y'all in here? And I'm trying to tell y'all, God will get a word out to you. And that's why I love chapter 40. Because it opens up with comfort me, comfort my people, says your Lord. It's opened up letting us know that the grass may wither. And the flower may fade. But the word of our God will stand forever. This is a chapter of poetry in the midst of a painful prose. Yeah. This is a chapter of beauty 
in the midst of brutality. It is a chapter of God speaking into an unsufferable situation. I don't know about y'all today, but I need a God who doesn't mind showing up and speaking in my real world situation. I need God who will give me a revelation in real time. That is real about how I feel and what I'm dealing with right now because God is real.
it can make you feel a little disconnected. And we want to hurry up and get where we want to get to. But we have to slow down and give our soul time to catch up with our bodies. Because if you're not careful, your body can get disconnected from your soul. I say again, have you ever felt disconnected eternally? Have you felt disconnected from yourself? That happens when you're in the midst of a crisis that has you captured. And I love chapter 40. And when we get to verse 27, it says, have you not known? Have you not heard? Can I get a witness right there? And there's a whole lot of ways to know somebody. Can I get a witness in here? I can, I know, uh, uh, I know Bob Lilly, who played for the Dallas Cowboys. We sat down together and had a spaghetti dinner over there in Graham, Texas. Can I get a witness in here? I've seen him play football. I said, I know me some Bob Lilly. I know his name, I know he played ball. But I really don't know Bob Lilly. Are y'all in here with me? Yeah, I know Harriet Tubman because of the history that I know and read about her. Can I get a witness here? But I really don't know Harriet Tubman. In other words, I'm just trying to tell you, you got to know God for yourself. Can I get a witness here? Do you know God for yourself? Can I get a witness in here? I know her better than she know herself. Can I get a witness, y'all? And that's because we got a relationship. Do you have a relationship with God? Because it's best to say you got to know Him. Hey, for yourself. Do you know God is real? I said, God is real.
come into our lives. We don't know what the circumstance is going to be. But sometimes it runs our battery down. Sometimes we need to come to church and get revived and get a jump start that we can have some power to do His will. I know I'm right about it. Then we get to verse 31. And verse 31 is the key verse. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They should mount up with wings as eagles. Run and not get weary. Walk and not play. We go from reconnecting to reinvigorating. Now we're going to close with renewing. Can I get a witness, y'all? The text lets us know God renews us. God does. How, how does God renew us? Well, I'm glad you asked. God renews us because the text says the word renew in Hebrew. It is a word that used for a, a blade of grass spouting again. You know, I'm a, I consider myself, Reverend Chapel, a, a yard man. Amen. And so, this thing is talking about a blade of Bermuda grass. Amen. And, 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 and the blade, uh, it sprouts. It emerges from the dirt. And yet it sprouts again. And, 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 and we're talking about it's, it's, it's submerged. It's, it's all covered with this dirt. Amen. Yeah, and so one day I went out there and I talked to the grass. <laughs> it ain't that kind of grass now. <laughs> what y'all be tripping on? I said, grass, how did you sprout again? <laughs> and the grass said, because all this dirt does not define me or confine me. Well, well, well. In other words, I use the dirt that's around me as nutrients. And the nutrients fed me. And I rose above the dirt. And that's what God is saying to somebody today. Not 
not be with it. Walk and not faint. Because you're going, you're not going to quit. Oh, I'm done now. But y'all do remember underdog, don't you? I left underdog trapped in a rubber contraption. The last part is that overcat took him to sweet party purebred in order to use them as commodities in his economy. And, 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 and you know what happened, don't you? I'm going to tell you what happened. Underdog said, sweet party, I'm weak right now, but in my ring, there's a secret compartment. And it's got a super energy pill. And if I can just get that super energy pill and put it inside of me, I'm going to have the power that overcat doesn't know anything about. And y'all know what happened, don't you? Underdog took the energy pill. And before you know it, Underdog defeated the overcat. Why? Because a super energy pill was in his ring. But Pastor, I ain't got no super energy pill. Well, let me tell you where you can get it. Open up the word of God. Yeah, yeah. You'll find yourself a super energy pill. Yeah. All things work together for good yeah. to those that love God. Yeah. I'm getting ready to take a super energy pill. Cast your cares on God.
I've got some hope in Jesus Christ. He's my strength. He's my super energy pill. Because when he died, he rolled with all power in his hand. We can defeat the overcat. Whoever the overcat is, we can defeat him. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Go and go.